my name is Hunter Lawrence. I'm a project engineer at GCI. I'm pretty new to the industry. Um, I graduated from Carnegie Mellon University in May of 2018. I've been with GCI since July of 2018. I'm a really big enthusiast, so I'm really passionate, happy to be here answering questions for all of you guys watching these videos. My name is Dustin Sloan. I work with Skyline Attractions. I am the director of creative process. So that kind of entails different design aspects of stuff that we are working on as far as sky warps and exciting projects going on at Skyline as well as the stuff going on at GCI. We're definitely in constant contact with GCI. There's always something to be done. Uh, tons of projects that we're working on really closely with them. So um, I'm always on the phone with Hunter, I'm always on the phone with Claire, trying to work out the logistics of different things, making sure that we're meeting our deadlines on time, making sure that everything's up to standard of quality. So it's no surprise, one of the biggest things going on in the GCI office right now is all kinds of work on Texas Stingray, our most recent coaster that will be opening at SeaWorld San Antonio in spring of 2020. This coaster, similar to the company's first foray with GCI, Invader, will have a steel structure so I did a lot of work with kind of making sure the production of all of those thousands of steel pieces. We have an angle line machine in our shop, so we made all of that structure in-house, all galvanized. All of the bents of Stingray are currently standing. Uh, our teams have been working really hard down in Texas. Um, the heat's finally dissipating. We're, we're right on track to open uh, spring 2020. and. I personally am really excited about the layout of Stingray. I think it really combines the best aspects of big turns of kind of more twister-esque design with the really quick runs of an out and back. We've been working a lot lately on trying to improve the design process uh, behind the GCI coasters. So we are really looking forward to see how that project turns out, looking forward to the future of working with GCI on their various designs and really pushing the limits of what a wooden roller coaster is capable of doing. It's been really great having all the guys and ladies from Skyline available to talk to. I've definitely learned a lot from them. I think it's really beneficial to kind of have that interplay between companies. Um, you have more minds to kind of work on things and work out, you know, bounce ideas and issues off of each other and kind of reference each other. Um, but before we get off of Stingray, um, I want to kind of shift to the, the lead car, which we revealed a couple days ago. This is what the lead piece is going to look like as it runs around the track. I think it came out really nice. We had a lot of people here for the reveal. Um, I think people are really liking it. SeaWorld has been pretty active in the whole design phase. They worked hard to, to come up with the theming. They really wanted to put their Texas flair on it. So the Infinity Flyer trains are the newest trains from GCI. They are going to allow GCI to kind of move the wooden coaster into the new age with inversions and more intense maneuvers. We're really excited about how they turned out. They are incorporating class five restraints, which is the main thing that kind of drove the design for those cars. It allows us to go up to negative one Gs, which is definitely a new thing for GCI. And we're getting away from welts as much as possible with those cars and hoping that we can increase the uh, life cycle of those trains by having them be machined and bolted connections and really just simplifying and cleaning up that design. So we're really excited about how they turned out. You might have noticed there's some stylistic changes from last year. We're kind of moving more towards what the final design of those trains will look like. We're able to turn out of the station and do a 10 foot radius turn and then go up the lift and then have that same drop pass down right through that turn that is sandwiched between the station and the lift, which is something that was completely unheard of for the original Millennium Flyers. Um, so that's something definitely that opens up a lot of possibilities for compact layout design. Even if parks are interested in kind of a smaller layout, but maybe more compact, that'll allow a lot more track to be in a smaller you know, square footage area. Um, and we actually did, since revealing the car at last year's IAPA, we did test it on White Lightning at Fun Spot. So I think that's kind of an interesting thing that a lot of people will be glad to hear. Um, it was, I think the park was open that day. It was, I, we I, were in broad daylight. Yeah, Dustin was down And there. anyone could have just come up and taken videos or pictures and no one did. It's cool to be able to have rides and relationships with parks that allow you to kind of test new products. We tested, so there were three chassis. Uh, there was a, a lead car and then we put weights on the other cars to you know, help it get around the track. Um, and that, that whole process really helped 
um, drive some of the more ergonomic changes to the train and identify other issues. So it was a really important step in, you know, just to make sure everything was designed just so, just how we want it before actually selling it. So we've got a flyer here that's actually showing off the latest version of the Infinity Flyers. What you can see here, we've actually got a really interesting backside on this representing the versatility of the theming of these trains. So I guess that's another benefit of these trains, is just the ability to transform them depending on what the park is looking for into whatever type of concept or theme that they're going for. So this model, we actually brought this last year for the first time. This is a, a Chris Gray model and it's a really beautiful model. It represents just kind of our openness towards exploring different ways of building a wooden coaster. You can see that's got some of these more steel structures on it and the corkscrews obviously in the middle of the layout. So it's just kind of representing the, the direction of innovation that GCI is looking to prove with their newer designs. It's been really beneficial to, to have a physical model at the booth. It draws people in and like Dustin said, it's very easy for people to come over and kind of use that as a starting point to you know start talking about um, maybe something they're interested in. No, no concrete plans for this yet, but it's, it's been really great for generating all kinds of interest at our booth. Um, and it's, it's really to showcase what GCI is looking to push forward and accomplish with our designs. So last night at Fun Spot, we did show a small 10 foot section of an all steel track. It's still in a very early phase. We're still working with you know, manufacturing techniques. Really the big thing is that there are, are no welds and really a, a steel track with no welds hasn't been seen before and we're really excited to keep exploring that you know, possibility. Um, and it can be really versatile with different types of uh, supports. It's pretty open at this point. We have a lot of big hopes and check back next year. Hopefully we'll have some more information and details to give you. But yeah, it was a pretty, it was a big moment for us and we're just really, really excited to see where it's going to go from here.